From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of cultures, traditions, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Namaskar viewers, welcome back to another episode of My India. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and in today's episode, we're going to offer you a glimpse into India's cultures, diversity along with the developments happening in and around the world. The festival of Christmas lights up a gloomy winter day. Lavish feasts and deserts, melodious carol and colourful Christmas trees make us rejoice the birth of Jesus Christ. The festival was celebrated recently with full fervour in India and across the world to deliver the message of sacrifice and hope and mark the birth of a Masiha. Have a look. The greatness of India's culture can be found in its festivities. Festivals here act as threads that weave the fabric of traditions wherein people rejoice in taking pleasure in small moments spent with their loved ones. Christmas is one such festival that brings joy to the lives of people, providing them with an opportunity to unite with their families and friends. The festival of Christmas is observed on the 25th of December every year which commemorates the birth of Jesus Christ, who is revered in the Christian community as the Son of God. On this occasion, recently over billions of people in India and around the globe visited churches and their loved ones to cherish the auspicious day together. Christmas is all about family getting together, celebrating with your loved ones. That's the spirit of Christmas. The decoration for Christmas starts a month prior to the occasion. During the festival, the marketplaces were decked up with huge Christmas trees and dazzling lights. For the occasion, people were also found purchasing decorative items like apparel, jewellery, decor items, food and souvenirs. Apart from shopping, people experienced a host of events like live music and dance performances. लोग सेलिब्रेट करते हैं विद गुड फूड, प्लम केक, समटाइम स्वीट वाइन। आठ साल पहले हमने क्रिसमस ट्री लिया था, तो उसके लिए एसेसरीज वगैरह कभी यहाँ से खरीदते हैं हम लोग। क्रिसमस ट्रेडिशंस वैरी ग्रेटली अराउंड द वर्ल्ड। हाउएवर, एक्सचेंजिंग गिफ्ट्स विद द लव्ड वांस, डेकोरेटिंग क्रिसमस ट्रीज People with their family and friends visit churches, read the Bible and offer prayer to Jesus for their well-being. Later, they share hearty meals with them as Christmas is a time for families and friends to come together and enjoy a special meal. In the name of God, like a very, I wish you a very happy Christmas. Uh, this is a very precious day for us, like the born of the Jesus. And this is a very special occasion. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I wish everyone uh, like the good health and the wealth. And to know everyone that Jesus was the uh, Christ and he is the real God. And uh, we will be celebrating the Christmas in a very uh, happiest manner. And we'll be coming to the church and we'll be rejoicing in the church. And we have a great day. The Christmas tree is said to have originated in the 16th century in Germany. Moreover, whom the world calls Santa and the children desperately wait to receive gifts from, was actually a bishop in the 4th century, Saint Nicholas, who was known for his generosity once. I'm a Bandar resident, so uh, this is uh, awesome uh, being here and uh, being a Bandar resident for uh, almost for the last 50 years. So this is a first time experience for us uh, and I've come with my family and uh, you just like just spending the night over here, you know. So it's great. I think it's a great feeling. I think a lot of people here have never seen this kind of crowd this late in the night. So it's been beautiful. Festival like these showcase India's rich and unique traditions cultivated for years in every corner. Meanwhile, they also give people a break from everyday chores and an opportunity to connect with their families and friends.
And now, let's delve into India's resurgence as a global education hub, exploring its rich history and the contemporary allure it holds for students worldwide. From the ancient seat of learning at Nalanda to today's cutting-edge institutions, India's journey in education is indeed fascinating. Take a look. India is a mix of cultural and regional diversity. The country, which was once the source of education that enlightened the world with knowledge and consciousness towards the interconnected world, is dwelling on the path to once again becoming one of the prime educational hubs in the world. From initiating the journey of knowledge from Gurukul through scriptures and religious textbooks to evolving into modern-day education, India remained resilient. And even today, every year, students from more than 136 countries such as Nepal, Bhutan, Nigeria and Indonesia enroll for educational degrees in India. Moreover, the network of colleges, universities and institutions like IISC Bangalore, Ames and IITs has fostered a culture of research and innovation that has aided India to become an attractive education hub for international students. To India to study MA, Masters of Arts and Literature, I've come to realize that India has a lot of hidden treasures that the world does not know about. It has exposed me to a lot of Indian culture and currently there is a thought there is a subject I did called comparative literature and it has made me to be able to compare Nigerian literature with Indian literature. Oh uh, well it's more financially aidable for the students over here. Like over there you have a certain policies that like help the students but at the same time it has its own like backlash to it. Over here it's like more freely eligible. So yeah. Today India ranks fifth in terms of cross domestic product and is considered one of the most powerful and influential countries around the globe. The country is at the forefront of technological advancement and is catering to the demands of diverse academic interests like engineering, computers, arts, philosophy, political science and classics etc. With that, India holds the distinction of being the second largest contributor of international students globally. Furthermore, programs like Study in India and the Indian Council for Cultural Relations Scholarship Program render more than 3,000 scholarships under 21 different schemes to foreign students from about 180 countries. The schemes under the ICCR programs are funded by ICCR, the Ministry of External Affairs and the Ministry of Ayush. We got offered with the scholarships and it's because of the scholarship I think I'm here today. We are here through the program called Study in India, we call it SII scholarship. So the Indian government provided us the full scholarship funding like I'm studying here without paying any payment because of the scholarship. Historically, India was considered the most preferred destination for education as Nalanda University came into existence. The University of Nalanda in Bihar state of India housed thousands of students and scholars. Nalanda attracted students from China, Korea, Japan and Southeast Asia offering courses in diverse fields like Buddhist philosophy, grammar, medicine and astronomy. Maintaining India's age-old cultural practices of imparting quality education to everyone, many educational institutions like Chandigarh University and Marwari University of Rajkot are providing world-class educational facilities and a student-friendly campus to international students. Professor Nilesh from Marwari University spoke about how such scholarship initiatives also help in cultural exchange as students from abroad enroll to pursue studies with Indian students. We have, as I spoke earlier, we already have MOU with uh, some government. Uh, if I specifically mention, we have MOU with Ministry of Higher, Tech, Higher Education, Mozambique. And so they send students here. We are also uh, dealing with Zimbabwe ministry. So there are few embassies, there are few government and you can say ministry who uh, give scholarship to their students to study here in India. Mainly students join here for engineering uh, related uh, courses like engineering domain, uh, say civil engineering, 
mechanical, computer application, uh, AI, big data and uh, IT engineering, ICT. Then apart from that they also go for other courses like law or uh, computer applications. We do have uh, you can say entire Africa is here, whatever country you name from Africa are here. Apart from Africa, we do have uh, students from all the SAC countries. Apparently, the footfall of foreign students has been observed to increase in recent years. The All India Survey on Higher Education conducted by the Ministry of Education suggests the total enrollment of foreign students in India was 48,035 as per its 2020-21 report comparing the year 2015 to 16 which showed 45424 furthermore as per 2022 ugc guidelines the universities are also allowed to create up to 25% supernumerary seats for foreign students in undergraduate and postgraduate programs I uh, uh, I hear a, a lot of about uh, culture of India and I uh, India it's uh, the most place uh, uh, famous of uh, IT uh, just IT and technology and computer or information or uh, the things in the in the all the world all over the world so I come here to study IT here it's uh, uh, two more technology from us and I uh, like to uh, learn uh, computer science and uh, in India special because uh, Syria it's good but not, uh, not as India. India's dream to approach a $5 trillion economy can only come true through fostering a bond with a globally connected academic community which India now understands very well. Therefore, education is the key to the pursuit of taking the country towards progress and development. And now, a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Over 25 members from the LGBT community took part in Pride Walk in India's eastern Siliguri town of West Bengal. The participants, mostly from the transgender community, walked in colourful traditional Indian attires and scores of locals came by to watch the fashion show. The show was aimed at providing a platform for the visibly different transgender community and other sexual minorities to showcase their talent in the world of fashion and express themselves confidently on a stage. The organizer of the program, Bodhi Sattah, said that the event was an effort to fight the social stigma attached to their sexual identity even after the removal of a legal hurdle. At least 37,000 women from the Ahir clan gathered to perform the traditional Ras dance in an act of spiritual offering to the Hindu deity Lord Krishna in India's western Gujarat state. Several participants said that the Maharas or Grand Ras celebration was organized to showcase culture, tradition and prayers for world peace, unity and prosperity. Drone footage showed a sea of women dressed in traditional Indian attire performing the dance in a circular formation resulting in a colourful showcase of the age-old tradition. Dwarka, the ancient coastal city of Gujarat, is believed to be the site of Hindu deity Lord Krishna's kingdom and the tradition of performing the Ras dance is said to have originated 5000 years ago according to legendary folklore. Moving on, the vibrant state of Gujarat has once again organized its month-long cultural exhibition of art and handicrafts in the Kutch district as part of the annual Ranutsav. The exhibition is an effort to support the local artisans and to promote the state's cultural legacies. Have a look. The culturally rich state of Gujarat is entrenched with music, cuisines, folk dances and folklore which also form part of its lifestyle. 
Carrying forward the state's legacy, Gujarat Kutch has once again organized its month-long cultural exhibition of art and handicrafts in the tin city of Dordo. The exhibition is part of the annual Ranotsav organized by the Tourism Department of Gujarat aiming to support the local indigenous artisan groups and traditional handicraft products. Over lakhs of tourists from around the globe as well as from different corners of the country throng to the festival to appreciate and purchase the handicraft items from the artisans. The shopping in the market area has been really amazing here. The food has been really good. We've been enjoying a lot of Gujarati cuisine uh, three times a day. I mean, you have everything available, right from you know clothes, fancy bags to stalls. Yeah, a lot of, and I'm I'm glad we are able to support the local uh, artisans here. So that's been great. From kach sarees to shawls to different clothes and handicraft items. Tourists are coming to buy extensively from the stalls, displaying 200 varieties of indigenous products. During the fair, the tourists are thrilled to see the detailed Gujarati handicraft work, especially the use of mirrors in a variety of shapes in embroidery. The artisans associated with this artwork have been engaged in it for the past 30 to 40 years. For them, the exhibition is both preserving their regional heritage and ensuring their livelihood. The month-long annual festival will run until February 15, 2024. मार्केटिंग का तो ये मेजर हब है कच्छ के प्रोडक्ट्स अगर आपको देखने हैं तो यहां एक से एक आपको मिल जाएंगे चाहे आप साड़ीज लेना चाहें चाहे आप दुपट्टा लेना चाहें और इंडो वेस्टर्न गार्मेंट्स भी अवेलेबल हैं और गुजरात का हैंडीक्राफ्ट जो है वो बहुत ही सुंदर है स्पेशली मिरर वर्क और ये भरत का जो काम है ये स्पेशली यहां पर मिलता है वहां थोड़ा उसका कॉपी मिलता है ये ओरिजिनल वर्क यहां मिल रहा है Events like these are crucial to promoting traditional artworks and artisans at the global level as these events not only render a platform for the indigenous artisans but also provide them with a chance to earn a fair wage. And now we bring you some of the stories from the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. Meet celebrity French chef Dominic Corby. He has earned numerous medals from the French government for preparing French cuisine. His passion prompts him to travel the world over in search of quality ingredients. Based on Jefudo's recommendation, he paid attention to Fukushima's winter fishery. Jefudo is developing promotions to accelerate the export of Japanese food. Dominic Corby visited Haragama Fishing Harbor in Soma City. It is a very familiar place for him. The seafood market is filled with positive energy. Workers at Fishing Harbor Haragama expressed confidence in the area's recovery. Chef Corby selects quality ingredients for his French cuisine. The best fish to eat in winter is flounder. Fisherman's self-restriction protects it. After his return to Tokyo, Chef Corby managed to capture the essence of Fukushima's cuisine and prepare his own dish. Now Corby adds new flavors to his stock of French cuisine after his fishing trip to Fukushima. The Tokyo Metropolitan Government organized Grand Cycle Tokyo in Odeba, Tokyo for cycling enthusiasts. It was aimed to enjoy beautiful landscape, clean fresh air and accelerate to grow healthy life. Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike announces the event's start and outlines its goals. Tokyo Metropolitan encourages bicycling in a safe and healthful manner. Its goal is to encourage people to participate in sports at least once a week and lead a person with a disability to accessible sports. 
Oteba area has Rainbow Bridge and newly added Gate Bridge. These two bridges are landmark in Tokyo to attract local residents and visitors. A 32km course and an 8km course were prepared. 4,500 cyclists participated in the pleasant breeze and stunning scenery including Olympic and Paralympic medalists as well as other cyclists. Adoption of safe riding is another crucial aspect. Helmet was compulsory for all cyclists. Enthusiasts with tandem bicycle, which is designed for two riders, also participated in the event. People with physical disability also participated. Bicyclists enjoy the crisp, clean air and picturesque scenery of autumn along with the contentment that comes with being in a Tokyo metropolitan. And lastly, we'll take you to the Gulmarg city of Kashmir, which recently organized a conclave on ecotourism in collaboration with Gulmarg Development Authority to promote sustainability in the region. Let's have a look. Kashmir in India is often considered a living paradise on earth as its picturesque landscape has always mesmerized visitors with its evident scenic beauty. The city of Gulmarg in Kashmir, amidst lush green forest and Himalayan mountain in its backdrop, has long remained an attraction for tourists. Recently, the region, in a bid to preserve its floral essence and to maintain tourist influx in the area, organized a conclave on ecotourism in collaboration with the Gulmarg Development Authority and Ecotourism Society. Ecotourism is a way to promote sustainability in the face of growing global challenges due to globalization. It offers tourists an insight into the impact of human beings on the environment and fosters a great appreciation for our natural habitats. The purpose is the green, clean Gulmarg. We want that Gulmarg is polythene-free. It has been declared polythene-free, but in the right way, it is polythene and plastic-free. During the conclave, several people including tour and travels agents, hoteliers, environment experts and researchers addressed the event highlighting the importance of ecotourism. For the past few years, the valley has witnessed an influx in tourist footfall. Which is why the experts are looking at it as a good time to promote ecotourism. The initiative was an effort to educate the youth and stakeholders about its significance in heading toward a sustainable environment. The emphasis right now has to be put on one thing that is responsible tourism. Puri dunya abhi advocate kar hai responsible tourism ko and this is the right time for Kashmir to advocate responsible tourism. When we say responsible tourism, it is a vast subject. We have to ensure that we leave this tourism for coming generations to come. Because agar hum apne tourism products ko take care nahi karenge abhi, very soon they will perish. The Indian government, with concerted efforts, has hoisted and organized many events like this for both social and infrastructural development of the region and is endeavoring to roll out many more projects and programs of their interest in the years to come. And that's all we have for you this week. I'm your host Pratiksha Mishra and it's a goodbye from the entire production team.